How we doing friends? My name is Jesse. Welcome back to Male Nurse Mentor. I'm not in my element today guys. This is an Airbnb. I'm in a basement in Denver, Colorado. I came down here with my partner for a gem show. This goes up to who knows where. I'm just kidding. Clearly I'm in a basement and I am tired. This gem show is I think the second biggest in the world. Let me get comfortable friends. You guys saw the title of the video. I want to tell you guys about my experience getting my master's degree. You know, I'm not in my element. Let me choose a topic that I can actually give you guys some value in. I want to talk about a couple things. You know, I want to mention what school I went to for my master's, how long it took me, how much it cost, why getting a master's degree is important, and you know, a couple reasons why. And I also want to mention the school that I recommend for which master's degree. And I want to touch on, you know, the clinical versus the non-clinical again. I know I cover that quite a bit, but it does matter, especially when it goes to getting your master's degree. Stay tuned. I'm going to put some timestamps down below. Jump around if you need to. And why is this video relevant? Well, if you're in school, right, pre-nursing student, and you're not actually an RN yet, this is relevant, especially for you, because as you map out your blueprint, I know it's still early, right? You're just wanting to become a nurse and that's your only focus. But just because I'm already mentioning it to you, it's already gonna be like on the back end of your mind. You know, once you make it to be an RN, you're gonna start thinking about that next step. Oftentimes it's gonna include a master's degree and I highly recommend that. I'm mentioning it to you now so that way you have it in the back end of your mind. And if you're a nurse already in the workforce and you're trying to separate yourself from other people, Getting a master's degree is the way to do it. It is worth your time, it's worth your money, it's an investment in your career. And I'm all about personal development, but I'm also about career development as well. They kind of go hand in hand. Let's kind of jump into this video here. So as far as what school I went to for my master's degree, I went to WGU, which is Western Governors University. It's a fully online program. It's very flexible, all remote. You don't have to go in person for anything. Um, it's actually based out of Utah. I live in California, didn't matter. Um, and that's why I went there, because of that flexibility. You know, I work full time, 40 hours a week at least. And to go to school in the evenings while you work full time is very difficult. Especially for me, I don't work the three 12 hour shifts that a lot of nurses, you know, work. I work five eights, you know, just because I work in the outpatient nursing setting. I actually worked in the prison when I went to school. Now I actually do work from home as a nurse consultant, which I got this job because of my master's degree, just to mention that. How long did it take me? It took me, I thought it was only gonna take me a year and a half. It took me a year and eight months. So I started in February of one year and I finished like closer to the end of September. So about a year and eight months, a year and eight months is how long it took me. Um, and I'll talk about the school a little bit later on. So how much did it cost me, right? At least for me, for this degree, it cost me, me about 17 something, about $18,000, which isn't bad, especially for a master's degree. There's a lot of NP programs and a lot of other master's uh, degrees that you can get from other schools that cost a lot more money. So this next part is why I get a master's degree. So I just wrote a couple things here and then at the end I'll give you like a summary. But it sets you apart. Most people don't get it. It makes you very competitive for those limited spots that you get in certain jobs. And it will lead to an increase in wages. You know, just to name a few reasons why to go and get a master's degree. In summary, all those things are true just based on my own experience. Sometimes there are jobs that you're going to want to get in your career that literally they have a box not literally but you know what i mean they have a box and as long as you you have a master's degree you're going to check that box you know it's formality it, it it just is that way you know do people agree with it probably not someone with more experience is going to want to try to get that job versus someone with less experience but because that person with less experience has the master's degree they will likely get that job and that's what happened with me in this job to become a nurse consultant. I had less experience, but I had the degree, so I marked the box. And it's not that I knew exactly that this was gonna be the outcome, but I knew that one of the boxes to mark was a master's degree, so I went to get that. And I was competing with people with a lot more experience, and they didn't have that degree. So for some jobs, the hiring manager literally can't hire you if you don't have a master's degree. And a lot of jobs are actually like that, especially as you start moving up in the chain right, to nurse consultants, director of nursing, chief nurse executives, um, and hospitals and things like that. Sometimes they are looking for that. 
And if you don't have it, it's not to say they may not hire you, but they'll probably hire you with the plan, right, in your development to go get that master's degree while you're doing that job within a certain amount of time. And as far as the school, right, that I recommend, and along with this, I'll mention my master's degree was in administration and leadership. This is a degree that I can use to become a nurse manager, a nurse supervisor, clearly a nurse consultant, um, more on the administrative executive line of nursing. You know, and I'm going to get into this next topic in the next section where I talk about non-clinical, which is all those positions I just named versus clinical, which are positions that a lot of people actually go and get their master's degree in, right? When you start thinking about MPs. And I'll touch on that here in a second. So as far as the school I recommend for which type of masters, right? If you're looking to become a nurse consultant, a nurse manager, executive line, right? Go and get your MSN at WGU. I highly recommend this. There's no reason for you to go in person. You're probably a very busy individual. Going in person takes a lot of bandwidth, a lot of time. People who work 40 hours a week just don't have. It makes the investment that much greater and it's not necessary. WGU, it's accredited. I really enjoyed that program. It was way less expensive. It was way flexible. I could finish earlier than two years. Um, people even finish earlier than I did, right? People can actually finish in a year and a half or less. Um, there's a capstone at the very end that you do have to do just like any other master's degree that you're trying to get, right? Any other master's program, there's a capstone at the end. Overall, my best recommendation, if you're trying to go to the administrative nursing side, is go to just go to WGU, knock out that degree, get it, you're good. Clearly, if you're trying to become an NP, FNP, a CRNA, um, be on the clinical side of nursing, WGU is not going to be for you. They do have like an NP program, um, a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner program, but those are programs that are only in certain states. And because they are kind of remote, you know, all online, I don't have any experience with that. So I can't, I can't speak for those programs. In my opinion, when it comes to, you know, online schools, it may be cha more challenging, right? If you're trying to do an in-person component with, along with it, right? These schools are all online. It might be better to look at other avenues, right? Such as schools that are in person, especially when it comes to the clinical side of things, hands-on, get to be with other students, uh, pick people's brains, things like that. So this last topic that I wanted to talk about, and I've already kind of began to talk about it, which is the clinical versus the non-clinical. I'm always talking about this because I feel like people, other, other nurses that make videos don't speak on this part enough. In nursing, there's always two sides. There's clinical nursing, there's non-clinical nursing. Non-clinical nursing still has a clinical background, but I want you to think of it as desk nursing, non-patient facing nursing, that is non-clinical. Clinical nursing is patient facing, patient direct, patient touching, treating, that is clinical. I am on the non-clinical side as a nurse consultant, nurse managers, directors of nursing, chief nurse executives, you guys are on the non-clinical side of nursing. Clinical side, nurse practitioners, family nurse practitioners, nurse midwives, CRNAs, psychiatric mental health nurse practitioners, anything that's patient facing, patient direct, even if it's remote like telehealth, it's still clinical. I just wanna always explain that because there's always two routes. A lot of people don't become a nurse because they think they have to stay on one route. And a lot of nurses leave the field because they feel like they can only stay on one route, right? If people start on the floor bedside, they feel like clinical's all they can do. There's non-clinical as well. Try it, especially if you're burnt out from nursing, right? Nursing on the bedside. Another reason to say this is because when it comes to a master's degree, like I was mentioning, if you wanna be on the administrative side, non-patient facing, get your MSN in nurse leadership, nurse administration, something of that sort. If you're trying to be a nurse practitioner of some sort, right, stay clinical. It's still a master's degree program. It's just going to be a lot more clinical based. They're going to teach you how to treat and diagnose and things like that. So it doesn't make you any less of a nurse if you go to non-clinical or it doesn't make you any more of a nurse if you go to clinical. Nursing is still nursing. I just wanted to make this quick video. Like I said, it's a little bit out of my element. Um, I just felt like it's important. I know some of these videos aren't going to be the most popular, but I just want it to be out there in the YouTube space and the social media space of someone talking about it. And I can talk about this because I'm leading my own career by example. I got my master's degree. I'm about 
to be five and a half, almost six years in, into my nursing career. I already work on the non-clinical side. I left bedside, left the floor. I work as a nurse consultant, work from home, and I really enjoy it. I'm newer to this role, but I only got this role because of my master's degree. The biggest tip at the end of this video is focus on career development. Continue to build out that shovel. It is worth it to get your master's degree. It'll, like I said, for all the reasons that I said, so highly consider it, do it, look into it. I'll be here. See you guys on the next video. I just got to survive <laughs> this Denver, Colorado gem show trip.